It is good to be together on this day the Lord has made. My name is Heather Foley and I welcome you to our time of worship. I am really delighted to be one of the Methodist pastors in Chesterton. The Lord says to his people everywhere through the prophet Isaiah recorded in chapter 44, I have made you. You are my servant and I will not forget you. I want us to know that if you're feeling lost and forgotten, if you're feeling a bit neglected and alone, 
The Lord sees you and will not forget you. So as we worship together this morning, may we be confident that the Lord's amazing grace will pour out over us to provide the cleansing and the refreshing and the guidance on the good path that we all need. Now, through Isaiah, the Lord even says to us that all of his creation will shout and sing praise, even the mountains and the trees, because of what God is doing in us. So may we join our voices with all creation's chorus in praise and worship. Good morning. morning. The call to worship this morning is from Isaiah 44, verses 21 through 23. Remember these things, my people. I have made you. You are my servant. I will not forget you. I have swept away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like the morning mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Sing for joy, you heavens. For the Lord has done this. Shout aloud, you burst into sound, you mountains, your forests and all your trees. The Lord has redeemed us. He displays his glory through us.
scripture lesson this morning is from Romans 5, verses 3 through 8. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience in us and how that patient in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. In alert expectancy such as this, we're never left short, feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary. We can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. Christ arrives right on time to make this happen. He didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready. He presented himself for the sacrificial death when we were far too weak and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. And even if we hadn't been so weak, we wouldn't have known what to do anyway. We can understand someone dying for a person worth dying for. And we can understand how someone good and noble could inspire us to selfless sacrifice. But God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were of no use whatever to him.
all find a home of grace in Jesus Christ. Well, I received a, a card earlier this week that made me laugh out loud. And I thought I would share it with you because we all need to laugh out loud every once in a while, right? It's good for us to laugh out loud. So if we could see that, please. It says, the disciples had to admit that even at shadow puppets, Jesus was clearly the best. <laughs> you can see that Jesus is able to make a sacred lampstand while the disciples are fumbling around trying to imitate just a simple animal head. Jesus is the best at everything. And Jesus is especially the best at revealing to us God's love. He's the best at revealing God's love for you. So we continue together this month considering some of the stories of Jesus, which can help us experience the ever-flowing grace of God. Let's jump right in to the gospel story this morning from Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it, and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier? To say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. So there's a man in need who is brought into Jesus' presence by some caring friends. Now, the friends could have been deterred by the size of the crowd. It was massive, right? They had filled every room in the house and had spilled out onto the front lawn. The men couldn't even get to the front door, let alone get inside where Jesus was. They could have been detoured and stopped right there. But they weren't. They could have quit in embarrassment when they began to open the hole in the roof of the house owned by someone else. It's thought that this was Peter's house, and surely Peter, who was there, reacted strongly when the roof started to be lifted up of his home. They could have stopped, but they did not. They could have given up at the thought of interrupting this important preacher, but instead their faith and their love kept them going. They carried the man into an opportunity for healing and freedom. Jesus' first word to the man who was brought to him in such an incredible manner was son. We are never to know the man's name, but we do know he belonged to God. This person who was so needy, so stigmatized by his condition, was immediately restored to his social community by just one single word from Jesus. 
He was a son. He has value and sacred worth. He is seen and accepted. While the man was still immobile, while his sins were yet weighing him down, he was given an amazing gift of love. And Jesus doesn't stop there. I think that would have been enough. I think to have my worth and my belonging recognized by one so great as the crowd drawing Jesus, it would have been an amazing gift. It could have been enough to satisfy expectations. But Jesus goes farther. He goes so much farther. He says to the man, son, your sins are forgiven. The man's friends had brought him for physical healing. But Jesus sees that his sin is the greater need. Have you ever felt paralyzed by your troubles? Our mistakes and our failings, our refusal to follow in God's good ways, they all can paralyze us. They can produce in us powerful feelings like shame and regret, embarrassment, even resentment. All of that can weigh a person down. That compounded effect can hold somebody back. Our sins and all the accompanying feelings can trap us from moving forward. It can also affect us physically. The medical experts and the therapists today tell us this is true. Not all physical ailments are a result of sin or mental trouble, but some are influenced by it. They say the mind can influence the condition of the body and its ability to be well. But no matter how long the, paralyze, the paralysis lasts, there is hope for things to improve. That's the, the faith that brought the man on his mat before Jesus. That's the hope that made his friends persevere through the challenges. Well, as soon as Jesus declares the man to be forgiven, the upright religious experts were startled and then outraged. Only God can forgive. That's the basis of the Jewish faith. Only God can forgive. So who does this man think he is? He's blasphemed. He has insulted God with his claim of the ability to forgive. And according to God's law, which we know from Leviticus, he deserves death by stoning for such an offense. Jesus sees their hearts. He knows their inner thoughts. He has that ability from God as well. He calls them out. He exposes their unbelief and their hatred. He does so by healing the man's body too. Only God can forgive. Only God can heal. And so Jesus proves that he has complete authority from God by both forgiving and healing. Jesus is clearly the best at everything. And that same authority and power in Jesus Christ has now been established for all time. It is not just for the ancient people of the first century. It is for us today, too. Jesus' death on the cross atones for the sins of all persons who would accept the gift. George Bernard, in his well-known hymn, The Old Rugged Cross, called the cross the emblem of suffering and shame. It's the place where the paralysis of sin and its corresponding feelings and consequences can be removed. 
the Methodist Church where George first sang that hymn is not far from here. About an hour east in Dowagic, Michigan, the church still stands. You can visit it now for tours and concerts and special worship services. It is on the rugged cross that Jesus died for us. God's love flowed through Jesus' blood to pardon and release me and you and many. That's one of the core meanings of Christian baptism. It's in our vows as we stand with the water. Adults and teens and parents of infants all will declare in front of the congregation that they repent of their sin and that they accept the power and the freedom God gives for the change of heart and life. They all will confess Jesus Christ as their Savior, putting their whole trust in his grace. Now we don't know if the paralyzed man had faith as he was being lowered through the roof into the room. But surely, upon hearing Jesus name him as a child of God and say that his sin was forgiven, the man had to have a bit of faith. He had to have a bit of faith to even try to walk. I wonder if he felt a lightness in his spirit at Jesus' words. I wonder if there was an inner relief that then enabled him to take his feet from the mat and place them on the ground. There had to have been hope and confidence swelling in him as he stood on legs that had not held him before. Jesus attracted crowds nearly everywhere he went. Some came to listen to his teaching. Some came to see his miracles. Some came to experience his healing and his love. And others came to criticize and condemn. Many on all sides were shocked, even offended and appalled and dismayed. The same is true today. Some simply cannot believe Jesus is who he claimed to be. Some cannot understand why he would have kindness towards the most vile offender. Some cannot accept his invitation, that invitation to belong and be healed and be released. What do you say? Will you believe in Jesus and accept his grace again today? Will you become a person of faith who carries others when they are weak? into God's gracious presence. One of the responsibilities that I committed to on the day of my ordination is to declare the forgiveness of sins through God's pardoning, empowering love. And so I say to you, you are forgiven. Go and live free, walking in the light of the Lord. Amen.
Let us pray together. God, we come in awe of you, so much like those crowds that gathered around the house and saw Jesus do incredible work. We come in awe of you at what you have done for us in Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh Lord, that we would know his love again today. That we would feel his cleansing and know ourselves as your precious and beloved children. That we would find our place secure in your family, the church. Lord, like those friends who brought the weak man on a mat, we bring others today into your glorious presence. We want to become mat bearers for others. And there are names of people on our hearts. And so, Lord, now into the silence, we lift those names to you. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. And we pray that that love would dwell in us to give us confidence in our eternal future. Now, Lord, we bring to you the prayer requests from our church congregation that have come specifically to us this week. We lift up our sister and friend, Joyce Pergel, as she continues to be thankful for and miss her dear husband, Don. We lift to you Gwen Smith as she suffers with illness and stress. We lift to you Dennis and Karen Alexander and their whole family at the unexpected death of Dennis's mother. And we lift before you our brothers and sisters in Christ in the Chesterton Congregation of St. Elizabeth, the New Martyr Orthodox Church, who experienced the unexpected and sudden death of their priest, Father Stacy Richter, last Sunday. Lord, on this day as they gather, May you comfort their hearts and lead them in the ways of hope in that eternal life. And now, O oh Lord, we join our voices together as one people united by Christ, praying the prayer that he gave us as an example to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I forgot to mention a special prayer request that came to me right at the beginning of service. There was an accident on, I, uh, on Highway 49, and so if we could keep those victims in our prayers as well. After we've heard the word preached and we've heard the word come out of Scripture and prayed to the Lord Almighty, it is time to respond to God. And one of the ways that we can do that is through baptism. And today we have the joy of baptizing a little girl here who may even be asleep. That's great. Uh, that's great. Uh, you can see her picture. Uh, and so I welcome up uh, Emma Jo Bowman and her parents, Krista and Kyle, and uh, her Christian sponsors, Q and Melissa.
invite you to just kind of come and gather around the, the bowl here. And as we be, begin the baptism liturgy, any responsive parts that you have will be on the screen. We are just so excited that, uh, <laughs> that this little one is uh, coming into the family of God, that her parents are making that commitment to um, nurture her in the faith until she can make that decision for herself. And so brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, each of us are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation. And we're given new birth by water and the spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Little Emma here didn't do anything to deserve it. She's too little to even know what's really happening other than she's very safe and comfortable in her mother's arms. But God's grace comes to us first, before we're even ready, as we heard Pete read from Romans. So Krista and Kyle, as you make commitment for Emma, I ask you on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace, promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, say, I do. And now I ask you as her parents, but also you two as her sponsors, will you nurture Emma in Christ's holy church so that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly and to lead a Christian life? If so, say, I will. And friends, the commitment belongs to you as well. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. Will you nurture Emma and one another in the Christian faith and life and include her now in your care? If so, respond with the words that you find on the screen. With God's help. What a powerful words. Whenever you all feel weak in your responsibility, may you remember this moment. So let us all join now together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ. His Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended from death. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray together. Eternal Father, 
When nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. And after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, who was nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Now pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and this little one who will receive it, to wash away her sin, to clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. I invite you all to step a little closer. We'll see if she wakes up when the water hits her hair. <laughs> what name is to be given to her? Emma Jo. Emma Joe Bauman, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You're okay, sweetie. Ah, and now if the congregation and all of you would put your hand out towards Emma, the Holy Spirit work within you. That having been born of water and the Spirit, you may faithfully become a disciple of Jesus Christ and walk in the ways that lead to life. God's people said, Amen. Not quite yet. All right. So it is our joy to welcome our sister in the faith. May you respond with applause as well as the words that you find on the screen. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With the joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you Welcome. Emma, I'm not sure you know what's happening, but you are loved. Krista and Kyle, I know that you have committed to us publicly, but we have talked privately as well about how it is that you're going to raise her in the faith. And so one of the ways that you might do that both at home and, and in public is to remind her of what happened today. Share the story. And that candle can be a reminder as well that on the anniversary of her baptism, you would light it, let her blow it out, and explain to her what happened today and the commitment that you made and how much God loves her. We welcome you all. You can blow the candle out so we have no accidents. Here's that, and here's her baptism certificate. Welcome again. As we continue in our worship, I would just remind you that we are a church that values connection, that values our oneness in Christ and our connection to God through Christ, but also our connection to one another. We have committed 
to nurture each other in the faith and to walk with each other when any of us feel weak and to disciple each other that the world might be changed through us. We value connection. And so every week when I remind you that if you have prayer requests to share with the church, I mean it because we do value each of us. And so if you have a prayer need or a joy to share that we can celebrate with you, please contact us in the church office through email or leave a phone message or get on our website and uh, send us your information. Also on the website, you can go and be connected to the things going on at the church through our Friday e-newsletter. If you click the subscribe button on our contact page, um, you will be getting those regularly in your inbox. And it lets you know all kinds of things that are happening at the church as well as uh, we share pictures of things that happen. I believe Emma's picture was in there this last week. Uh, so that's great. Uh, but also this coming week, we will be sharing pictures of uh, that happened from yesterday's leadership gathering. Several folks from our congregation got together and had great conversation about where it is that we are as a church, especially coming out of COVID, but also where it is that God is leading us to live as disciples of Jesus and to be those hope bearers and light bringers. And so I encourage you to, to sign up to be part of our connection through the e-news and to rejoice with us and to pay attention for the things that are going to come out of that leadership gathering um, that happened yesterday. Some, some really exciting and inspiring work and opportunities were named. A couple of other things I want you to know about. The men are getting together, and I think uh, Roy here has more to say about that. So the men are resuming our Wednesday night uh, Bible study. You know, it's been on again, off again through this uh, crazy time that we've had, but we're restarting on Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock here in Swedish Chapel. If you've attended in the past, Welcome back. If you've never attended, come and give it a try. It's not a commitment, you know, for a four-week study, a six-week study, a 16, a 37-week. It's not like a disciple class. To, if you can only come for a week, come. If you can come for a couple weeks. If you can only come once a month, come. A gathering of men where you're able to share and learn from one another and share experiences. We, we watch a short video. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a heavy, dramatic thing, but it is heartwarming. Thank you, Roy. Also, I wanna let you know that we are still in the process of collecting a, a special offering for um, our citizens of our country who have been so affected by natural disasters lately. Uh, we stand in solidarity with them and in compassion with them. We suffer along with them and want to do all we can to encourage and support them. And we do that through the United Methodist Committee on Relief, which is the mission arm of the Methodist Church. UMCOR already has people on the ground not only assessing damage in places like Louisiana and Hurricane Ida, uh, but also in, in Tennessee and all over the place where natural disasters have occurred. And they'll be there. UMCOR is known as people who are still on the ground long after other agencies have left and are still invested in doing the long, hard, slow work of recovery. And when I say UMCOR is there, I don't mean a bunch of paid staff. I mean Methodists like you and me volunteers who give of their time to go to these places and offer hope and helping hands. Well, we can't all pick up and go to Louisiana. Some of us can and should, but others of us can give to the work that UMCOR does with our financial resources. And so we are taking up a special offering to give to UMCOR to help their work here in the United States with natural disasters. 
Uh, so far, we have collected $930. And if you would like to be a part of that special offering, there, and you're here in person today, there is a collection bucket. It's a purple, actually it's a basket, in the back of the room next to the offering box. Um, you are welcome to put your gift there. All those monies will go directly to UMCOR. And none of that is used for overhead. It all goes directly to disaster relief. Their overhead is paid through a separate fund. If you also can mail in checks and designate on the envelope that it goes to UMCOR or go to our online, uh, our website where you can give an online gift for your regular offering, but also um, for the special offering and you can designate it UMCOR and your monies will go as you direct them. No matter how it is you give, whether you're giving a regular offering or a tithe or a beyond tithe gift, may you do so out of your love for God and his love for the world. of all grace, we give our tithes and offerings and our special offering to you. 
Bless and use every amount that is given to accomplish your will through this church and through UMCOR to further your missional work of love. Direct our ministry spending towards spreading the gospel and discipling your children of all ages. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as you are able as we close our time of worship with song. Beloved children of God, go in the confidence that you belong to him, that you are loved by him, and that his power goes with you. Amen. Mm -hmm.